A senior Kannada journalist, Gauri Lankesh, was shot dead by unidentified assailants at her residence in Bengaluru on Tuesday night. Three police teams were constituted to probe the case. An investigation has been launched ever since to trace the culprits immediately. This is how the evening of last night and last night panned out. Gauri Lankesh. A senior journalist and a known right-wing critic was shot dead at her residence in Bengaluru on Tuesday night. Uh, she came around 8 o'clock uh, to her house. She stopped her car and then after stopping the car when she was entering to the house, there was some uh, gunshot. Mm -hmm. So the neighbors who were there, they, somebody has heard this uh, gunshot sounds. They immediately came and saw that this lady lying on the floor before entering into the house. They informed the local police and immediately the local police have rushed to the spot and found that by the time the local police have rushed, she is, you know, I mean, no more. Three police teams have been formed to probe the killing. Uh, two or three people by scooter or cycle motor. Uh, it will be then after uh, uh, inquiry, we can know. Massive outrage over killing with protesters hitting on the streets. <laughs> Carrying out candlelight vigil to condemn the incident. And that's the million dollar question which is haunting one and all. Who are those culprits and why did they kill Gauri? With Nolan Pinto and Rohini Swami in Bengaluru, Bureau Report, India Today. And I want to immediately connect to my colleague Rohini Swami who's joining us live for the latest details coming in in terms of investigation. Ra Rohini, you know, right now it's fundamental and primary to track the killers of Gauri Lankesh that the case doesn't go down like the ones we've seen in the past of other senior journalists. Absolutely, because uh, that is what uh, will be the focus throughout and the police also have been told that nothing, nobody should be spared and they should find, get to the bottom of this entire incident. Now, this is the most heinous crime that has been seen and, you know, if you see the way it has worked out also in the, the, the kind of timeline, if you see, M.M. Kalburgi, who again also was a critique and also of a, a person from civil society who raised his voice against civil issues, he also was shot dead at point blank range. Similarly, we're seeing Gauri Lankesh also. We've also seen uh, Pansare and Dabolkar also. The point is whether people who are voiced their opinions are being silenced is the question. We just heard the protests that took place through the midnight. I was there at night and people actually asking the question because Gauri through her writings would very clearly talk about what she felt was right and everybody has their uh, right to opinion and she did mention opinion in Lankesh Patrike which is one of the most famous uh, newspapers that was started by her father and then which she continued. Uh, interestingly now what I've given to understand from my police sources is that they have crucial critical CCTV footage that they have got. Now Gauri's friends because the number of threats that have been coming to her Every time she has posted some article, be it on social media or on her papers, she has been criticized by many people. And some of the criticism has been extremely harmful and her friends did uh, force her to set up a CCTV in, uh, near her place. And that CCTV, if it has captured any images, is extremely crucial for the investigation. The police as of now say three people were in, possibly involved in this. Uh, she was shot at point blank range, four rounds were fired. But that apart, uh, what is also crucial today would be the post-mortem report, apart from the fact that what other additional evidence the police would be getting on the site. Now, uh, Gauri also has, is, is one amongst us. She is a journalist, but also the fact she is a person who has represented a lot of people. And she has been vocal about her thoughts on many issues, be it the Rohingya Muslims. She has criticized the right-wing activists. She has uh, talked about a lot, of a lot of opinions of hers have been also very similar to uh, Dr. M.M. M. Kalburgi, who again is a rationalist. Gauri also is a rationalist. So it's quite upsetting 
for society itself to see that anybody who decides to that they want to come vocal about anything could possibly silence in such a gruesome manner. All right, thank you, Roini, for joining us. We're going to come right back to you for the latest updates coming in on the investigations there and the protests that are taking place. Mind, uh, you know, we want to tell our viewers right from about 10 a.m. there are going to be massive protests across the country protesting the murder of Gauri Lankesh. Like we said, from Delhi to Chennai, a candlelight vigil was also organized last evening itself in Bangalore. Protests are planned in Delhi, Chennai and Bangalore today. The students of SFI and DYFI are protesting at Bangalore's Hudson Circle since last night. The Press Club of India, the Press Association and Indian Women Press Corps condemned what they called a dastardly and outrageously armed attack. Chennai journalists will meet at Press Club at 11 a.m. to protest against the killing. Tomorrow it might happen to somebody else also. So, see, uh, this intolerance is growing in this country. Again, at which ideology, Kalburgi, Dabalkar, Pansare, Gauri, me and so many here are working, fighting and ready to give our life for that. Those who people cannot tolerate that because we are ready to die to uphold the secular values of this country. Gauri was doing that only. So, they have killed Gauri. My colleague Rohini Swami filed, that report, filed this report last night. Listen in. Uh, it's not the first time that we've seen people who have been open-minded and open thinkers who have been as of now targeted. But uh, clearly here at this time, they're saying that nobody can stifle anybody at this point of time if you are going to be even airing any of your views. Uh, this has been absolutely shocking, but we have seen cases earlier. We've seen Kalburgi case, we've seen Dhabolkar case, but it looks very similar also. The police are doing the investigations, but as Gauri Lankesh, as a person who's been so open about her thoughts, she's been very brave about herself. Today, to see the situation is quite upsetting, isn't it? It's just not upsetting. I mean, do we call this democracy? What is democracy then? Now, if you have your voice, and against somebody and they just come and kill you and nothing happens you're trying to silence isn't it of course i mean that's why i'm asking what is i mean is this democracy in that case are we living in a democratic country but in your understanding of knowing gauri and all of us knowing gauri for that matter why do you think she was attacked of course she was very open in her thoughts she was just writing what all of us were feeling you know See, being anti-establishment is being true citizen. Was her proximity to any established or any group itself? Definitely not. not. You know, see, if if you if you try to build such thoughts or if you try to so early if you try to seed such thoughts, you know, it's very easy for the police or the investigating authority to give away with that. And it's all it's been two years since Kalburgi is dead. Nothing has happened. Yes. The bigger point is that they are saying that you cannot. You know, stifle our thoughts, you cannot stifle people and just by killing people, that doesn't mean it's going to end. But more importantly now, the police are looking at investigating the case. The Chief of Karnataka has said that there will be a fair probe and that the accused will be brought to book. But how soon is the question? We have a case of Dhabolkar, we have a case of Kalburgi which still remains unsolved. So the only hope that a Gauri Lankesh uh, case like this does not go unsolved and justice is delivered to every single person who knew. Uh, Gauri Lankesh. Cameron Maduroni Swami in Bangalore for India Today. All right, my colleague Nolan Pinto joins us on exactly where uh, the investigations are placed with this murder that took place uh, last late last evening. Nolan, it's over to you. What are you picking up from uh, the police? What are the leads? Well, good morning. In fact, uh, last evening, the police were non-committal, basically, because according to them, it was very sketchy information as well. And they had just started the investigation. We were also at the spot till quite late. Now we are getting information that the police have recovered the CCTV uh, cameras, in fact, uh, the footage. Now, we had asked this, we had put this question to the Commissioner of Police, Mr. T. Sunil Kumar, and he said that, yes, they have CCTV footage over here and they will be looking into it. Now, the information we have is that at around 8.30, 8.25, 8.30, the information that the police have sourced from the surveillance footage was that while she reached her home, that is at the at her gate she parks her vehicle she enters while she enters there are two individuals on a bike now that is it that is what they see there 
they see a person with a helmet actually walking inside from the police footage. Now, once she actually enters inside her house, let me just show you where exactly it's where her car is actually parked as of now. That is where the first shot was fired when she was actually on her back. Now, finally, we are told she turns and another two shots were fired right in front of her. She tries to walk past, that is, towards her main door and slums there. The fourth shot is fired, it misses her and hits the wall. Now, the, the bullet marks are there, four casings, empty cartridges were found and the person with the helmet escapes. Now, this is the information that we have as of now. This is what sources in the police actually tell us from the surveillance footage that they have managed to source. Now, there are apparently two, uh, one or two CCTV cameras placed over here. Based on that, the police have actually got. But, you know, what really makes it extremely difficult for the police as of now was that the individual who actually fired on her was wearing a helmet and actually proceeded in the way that we are standing here. So the police will have to apart from trying to figure out something from what he uh, from uh, from what they actually have managed to source as of now and see in this particular area if any other surveillance cameras cctv footages have managed to track this particular individual or maybe the bike they were riding or if by chance they have made a mistake by removing their helmet anywhere in this particular area from the CCTV cameras uh, footage they can get. But that is the information that uh, we have as of now. And apart from that, yes, the political games have started with the Congress very clearly last night itself saying that this is this is to gag freedom of speech and expression. Anyone who talks against the uh, uh, the establishment, anyone who has an ideology against what is prevalent in the nation will be targeted. And the BJP and the artist is very clearly also stating that let's not make preemptive, preemptive moves. Uh, let's wait for the police to actually complete their investigations. And the police tell us that three teams have been set up and they are already on the job. Now, what could have also become a, a, prob a problematic as such for the police was that while the forensic science experts were actually going about their work in the night, somewhere after 12, it started to drizzle and pour. So whatever they could actually source from the spot was before 12. And to tell you the truth, the FSL or the uh, forensic science experts were at the spot and they had actually started their work pretty uh, soon. All right, you know, Nolan, uh, stay on with us because what you just pointed out there, about a political war of words which has already ensued between the Congress blaming the right wing for her murder. Congress Vice President Rahul Gandhi took to Twitter and said that truth has been silenced. The BJP, however, hit back at Congress saying it's premature to blame the right wing. Former Finance Minister P. Chudambaram also tweeted, and I quote, Liberty will survive only where contrarian views are freely spoken and written. Gauri Lankesh was afraid of no one who was afraid of Gauri Lankesh. In an official statement, the RSS has condemned Gauri's murder and appeals for a fair probe into the killing. Remember, Gauri was a critic of the right wing and had been convicted of defaming two BJP MPs in 2016 after they raised objections to an article written in 2008, which resulted in a six-month sentence and fine for Gauri Lankesh. All right, I want to connect to Nolan Pinto, who's tracking this political war that has erupted on the sidelines of this murder of uh, senior journalist Gauri Lankesh. Nolan, you know, we saw it come in right from last night with a flurry of tweets, what we saw on social media. But what's playing right now in Bangalore? There have been two BJP leaders that, uh, uh, you know, uh, had filed for defamation. She even, uh, she was sentenced, she was convicted in that case. What's playing out on that end? Well, in fact, last night itself, we saw how various politic uh, pol uh, politicians uh, actually tweeted right from the chief minister to various other senior leaders. You had uh, Congress uh, General Secretary in charge of Karnataka also sending a message. You had uh, KPCC president also sending a message. So everyone has come out with their messages stating that uh, here you had a person who was outspoken, who spoke her mind, who wrote what she thought uh, uh, what yeah. she thought was right, who was completely against uh, Hindutva forces, who was a, who was a big critic one of the major uh, biggest critics of uh, right-wing activists and anything that was right-wing so here what they have actually stated in their uh, tweets or in their messages was that they have lost a friend whom they've known for so many years and and this is not what we want in a democracy this is not what we want now this is what the Congress leaders have stated but what we are also g uh, getting to hear from the BJP is that they are saying let's not jump the gun let's not come out with uh, statements saying that uh, this is this is 
it is because of this particular reason that this happened one cannot pinpoint on any you cannot point fingers at anybody till the investigations are completed and they said let the police go about with their investigations let them do their job three teams have been set up and let's wait and see what it is it could be anything over here uh, Preeti. it could be maybe because of hindutva forces it could be because of business rivalry it could be anything it could be various issues so the ba the most important thing that politicians at least should uh, now wait and watch is basically let the police do their job and find out what really happened all right Nurun, thank you for joining us we're going to come right back to you what we are expecting of course is uh, nationwide protests across the country right from journalists and students uh, starting 10 a.m we're going to get you the latest coming in from there meanwhile to give you a profile of uh, who exactly was Gauri Lankesh she was known for her fearless and outspoken attitude, but her life as a journalist wasn't easy. She was convicted in a criminal defamation case for an article in 2008 against BJP MP Prahlad Joshi. Take a look at her journey. Daring, flamboyant. Gauri Lankesh was not an unknown name in the journalistic circle. Known for her fearless and outspoken attitude, Gauri was killed at a residence in Bengaluru on Tuesday night. An advocate of free press, she was also a strong critic of right-wing politics. Death threats has become a common factor in Karnataka. Whether it is in attacks on the on pubs in the name of or pubs and homestays in the name of culture and protection of women, or whether it's uh, attacks on Dalits, let me say something very similar to Una happened in Karnataka also, which did not make much news, in the name of cow protection, or attacks on liberals and leftists in the name of Hindutva. Born and brought up in India's IT city, Gauri was the daughter of famous poet turned journalist P. Lankesh. But her journey this far wasn't a cakewalk. In 2005, difference in opinion ended her relation with her brother Indrajit. Not only this, it also forced her to snap ties with the weekly magazine Lankesh Patrika, started by her father just to start a new one. But the renowned Karnataka journalist never lived far from controversy. She was convicted in a criminal defamation case for an article in 2008 against BJP MP Prela Joshi. Joshi, however, rejected any role when confronted by India Today. What are you talking? Is, is it that there are so many people who have murdered uh, before to before this also? This is not... Uh, it is any time murder is murder. It is condemnable. As the probe in Gauri Lankesh's killing has started, only time will tell what was the real reason behind it. Bureau Report, India Today.